This is Tom Bernanke, and today I'm talking about Freiburg syndrome. So usually it's the second toe here. It's breakdown of the bone, of the cartilage. There's five stages. This can cause ball of the foot pain. So when you land like this, it's gonna cause pain. I'm gonna tell you which stage most people are at, how to take care of it, how to get the best recovery time, and ideally how to avoid surgery. And we're starting right now. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. We appreciate your likes, your subscribes, your comment. We really love hearing if this stuff helps. It really makes a big difference for us, so thank you. Freiburg syndrome is called an infarction of usually the second metatarsal, but it can happen to any of these. Usually a good way to think about it, it's kind of like knee arthritis or hip arthritis, but of these joints right here. And what happens is technically it's the collapse of the blood vessels underneath the cartilage surface. It usually happens in girls, about four to one ratio. So four girls for every one guy. It usually happens at around 15 to 18 for girls. But generally, if you think about it as arthritis in that area, we see the results most commonly as people are 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. That's when you really see the results because young, healthy people, they're flexible, they usually don't carry as much weight and they can compensate onto their other foot. Whereas old, older people, that's when they see that pain because they can't compensate as much. The biggest risk factor is a long second metatarsal. So this bone right here, the second metatarsal, if it's long, like watch this, as the foot bends, you can kind of see how that is the longest one, and this is where the pressure is going. If you repetitively jam that, that's gonna lead to collapse of that head. So the easiest thing to do is to prevent that jamming, and we'll go over that in detail. But usually where you would feel it is right in this area, right there as you're walking during the day on your feet, it just starts aching more and more and hurting more. So the first thing you wanna do, that's always the disclaimers, go see your podiatrist because the biggest problem with these is misdiagnosis. Uh, a lot of times when people uh, message or ask us about these things, it's usually the wrong diagnosis. So senior podiatrists can save you a lot of time and money and get the right diagnosis first. And the way you do that is, number one, we would evaluate the joints. Because a lot of times by bending the toe, by seeing if it's dislocated, is it capsulitis? Is it a plantar plate tear? Is it a ligament rupture? Is it a hammer toe? Is it a bunion? Are you simply just leaning because of hip tightness, leg tightness? We can get an x-ray. We can get an ultrasound in the office. So in our office, we do ultrasounds and x-rays. And in our building, we have an MRI, so we could get that if needed. But sometimes that's a costly thing, but a lot of times that's the next thing you jump to if it's not getting better. And then checking out the biomechanics. How tight are your hips, your lower backs, your hamstrings, your knees? These are usually the key. And a lot of the times, I like to think of Freiburg syndrome kind of like a bumper on a car. And a lot of times people wanna replace their bumper, but they don't check to see if the brakes are working, they don't see if the steering wheel's working. You know, uh, if your bumper gets replaced but the brakes aren't working, you're probably gonna damage your bumper again pretty quickly. And that's the same thing with the second toe. There's usually things like a tight ankle, tight plantar fascia that lead you to put a lot of pressure into that joint. And that's the big problem of just thinking about the second toe. Another thing you can do is a taping method. I love the taping method, and here's the video. This is how to tape your second toe. And I sped this video up because it was way too long, I noticed, so duct tape, everybody's got it. I like to rip it in half and just pinch it in the middle because especially if you have hair on your second toe knuckle, you wanna make sure that's not pressing onto that hair because coming off that will kill your foot. Uh, and your toe. You don't want to rip off your hair with duct tape. So see right there, uh, the non-sticky part goes up top, and here's the slow motion, but I did speed it up. So I'm just pinching it at the top because this is what holds your second toe knuckle down. It prevents it from bending as much. It doesn't fix the cartilage problem, but it holds it stable so that when you're walking during the day, you don't have to buy an expensive strap. Everybody's got tape. Think about it kind of like that piece ribbon that you see on people's cars. Um, or the breast cancer support ribbon right there. So see, the sticky part goes to the bottom of your foot because most people don't have hair there. I would think most people in the world do not. Uh, and then right there, see, it's just holding the toe down. You don't really know it's there, it can stay. So there's five stages of this. Stage one is there's nothing really wrong with the bone, but if we got an ultrasound, or an MRI, it would show bruising in the area. Stage two is a little bit of damage to the cartilage right there. Uh, 
Stage three is damage to the top of the cartilage. Stage three is the top and the bottom of that cartilage. Stage four and five are pretty much complete destruction. So when you look at the x-ray, there's not a joint. It's just like all fused jagged bone with spurs. So usually stage one or two and three are very correctable by doing things like good shoes. So a lot of the times you can get a big shoe like this. Look at how it doesn't bend. When it doesn't bend, look at it rolls like this that second toe's not jamming. But on the other hand, a shoe like this, look at your foot's absorbing all that damage. And when you land, look at it doesn't really roll, dropping this thing all over the place. It doesn't really roll, it just jams in the front right there. When you walk like this, look at how much your foot flattens out and your second toe jams. But with something like an orthotic, look at the foot's not flattening out. There is a lot less pressure on that second metatarsal joint. There's a lot lot of limiting on that Freiburg joint. So you can see here, this is a custom orthotic, you can see how there's more pressure up here. So another thing you can do is see a pad like this, you can stick it on the bottom so that you can see right there's the pad. The second toe joint goes right there. So where that pressure is right there, you can see it's reduced because of this pad right here. It's tough to conceptualize, but the bottom line is it's a quick, easy solution that your podiatrist can do for you, and it works pretty easily. So for like the stage one, two, or three, that works really well. As you get into four and five, what one option is, is get an x-ray, get an ultrasound, making sure that that's the proper diagnosis, because usually it's not, usually it's something else. What I like to do at this point is you can do an injection in that joint with an anesthetic. Because a lot of the times, if you put the anesthetic into the joint, so if I put the anesthetic into the joint and the pain goes away 100%, then you know it's probably inside that joint. But if we inject that joint and there's 0% relief, then it's probably not that joint. Is that perfect? It's not perfect, but it gives us an idea, especially as we're planning surgery. And at the same time, that means as you're working up to surgery now, there's a couple different procedures. So surgically, you could go in with a smoothing device and kind of clean off all the spurs on top. Uh, you could kind of clean out the joint, but if there's no cartilage, probably within five to 10 years, it'll start coming back pretty quickly, especially if you're tightening your hamstrings, your legs, your calves, and you're putting pressure into that area, then that's kind of the problem. You're still gonna be jamming that joint and it's not gonna be getting better. So another option is you could do a joint replacement that's usually only recommended in older people like 70s, 80s that are not active. If you're a young teenager, that's probably not a good idea because that joint replacement, if it breaks, now you have a huge defect in the area. The real key is assess your biomechanics with your podiatrist and get that stretched out. Stretch out your hamstrings, your calf, your thigh muscles. This is the real root cause. So take a look right here. My left foot can bend up, but not as much as my right foot. I actually injured my left leg. That's why my left foot doesn't turn up. So check that out. That's about a 10 degree difference right there. So my foot has to turn out. On my left foot, I put more pressure onto the front of my foot. And my right, my right foot like this can turn up, but you could see that puts more pressure on my left ball of the foot. And if I had a longer second metatarsal, that's where I'm gonna develop the second metatarsal joint pain. So what's the best way to get the flexibility up? The best way to do that is to get some ice. So I like to freeze a water bottle. This is a can, make sure it doesn't explode. But basically you get this on the bottom of your foot. So your plantar fascia, which connects your heel to your toes, you wanna massage it and ice it at the same time. Inflammation prevents stretching. So this is the concept most people struggle with is if you're sore and inflamed, you can't get flexible. So there's products like this. This is an ice ball. So it's an aluminum ball that's filled with water that can freeze. Not the best for the foot, but really good for your calf muscle because if your calf and your hamstring are tight, that can work really well. These balls are pretty low cost. They're like $1 or $2. You can find them at the dollar store probably. Simply using your body weight and just rolling across there will massage, break up some adhesions, really loosen up your plantar fascia. There's a couple harder ones, a couple softer ones. I always say start soft, it should never hurt. If it's hurting, you're probably going too hard and causing too much pain. I love the massage roller stick. This is $7 online, I've seen it. You can get it at most Walmarts most big box stores. Uh, it's a very common product. So calf muscle tightness causes foot tightness and causes pressure on the ball of your foot and it can exacerbate Freiburg syndrome. So 
by not loosening up your calf muscles, this is a big mistake I see people make. Even if you get surgery, but you keep plowing all your body weight into your second toe after it's been debrided and smoothed down or you had a joint replacement, the exact same thing's gonna happen. So right here, when I get up in the morning, I'm just massaging my perineal tendons, my plantar fascia, my calf muscles. You can see I'm working on the plantar fascia right here. But you'll notice just doing this a couple minutes every morning, you're gonna be a lot looser the rest of the day. So just keep hammering away at those joints and ligaments. And paradoxically, that will make you more flexible and take pressure off your second toe. So see right here, before I did all that, I could barely touch my toes. But now I can almost get my wrist to my toes after massaging. And now when your soreness is down, that's the time to stretch. If you can't reach the toes, use a towel. But you want to get those calf muscles. You want to get those hamstrings. So see, I'm getting that stuff out of the way. But just massage for a couple minutes and then stretch for a couple minutes and you're ready to go. Especially if you're on your feet all day, maybe you can do it at lunchtime, maybe you could do it at nighttime. Combined with good shoes, good orthotics, that's really gonna be the key to getting better. And that's what's really gonna help you out. Another thing I'm a huge fan of is, to get the soreness down first, you have to cross train. If you need to walk two miles a day, don't do it. Go swimming, ride a bike, do some Pilates, work out at home. These are really the keys and start working on your stretching, start wearing good shoes, start wearing good shoes, good inserts. We have some links down in the show notes. These things work really well. Hit the subscribe for amazing foot content, bunions, heel pain, everything for the foot and ankle. Do it safely and cost effectively. We've got you covered, so subscribe.